<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ken Seven channel and joining me for a I'm just like so excited about this podcast today because it's um the mists of time are going to descend over the the various podcast uh, streams and we're going to discuss we're going to discuss where this Liverpool team stroke squad fits in with the great teams of the past now I've thought long and hard about this and we could leave it till the end of the season. Of course we could. But I don't want to do that because we don't know. I, I kind of want this as a, a thing where we discuss it with a view to what potentially might happen at the end of the season. So we could have left it, but I've decided not to do that because I didn't want to leave it. I wanted to do it now. So joining me are the Owl Arses, Paul and Eddie Jones and young Paul Moran. Gents, welcome. Thanks very much for um, to joining us. We were supposed to be going live, but we just couldn't get one of the streams wasn't working. So we couldn't get that working. So we've decided to record it and this will be going out a little bit later than it should have been. But that's all good. So where do we start with this? Let's start with this current team. So this current team um, are outstanding. Um, they, they're, a, 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 I suppose, a genesis of the team that, played in 2018, 19, 20, that won the Champions League, the League, the World Club Cup, Super Cup uh, and the Charity Shield. Um, and that te- those two teams, and this is what you're judging it against. In 18, 19, the team got 97 points and finished second. And one of the metrics that I've used when I've looked is th- at this is the points per game average in the league, because that's a good way of comparing the team's over, you know, from different eras. And then the the 2018-19 team got on 97 points with a points per game average of 2.55. The 19-20 team that won the league got 99 points with a points per game average of 2.61. And that's the metric that I've used. Now, we'll go way back and start chronologically with the the 63-64 team. Uh, Paul, I'm going to come to you in a minute, but I'm just going to just run through what they achieved. So they won the league for the first time since being relegated to the second division. They came up under Shankly. They got 83 points and their points per game average was 1.98 in a 42-game season. The team, which Paul's going to pick me up on now, (laughs) was Lawrence, Smith, Yates, Byrne, Lawler, Strong, Thompson, Callaghan, Stevenson, Hunt and St. John. Paul, what's uh, what's your thoughts about that team in particular? Um, and go on, you might as well tell me that I've got the team wrong because... I've oh, no, you, said, you got good. it from a website. My dad played in the 63-64 Championship winning season and got a medal. And off the top of my head, I think he played upwards of 25, 30 games that season as well. So, But that's just me being biased off the dance <laughs> And a look at it. Uh, it's one of them things, isn't it, with that team? Obviously, with me being the youngest of the old asses, I didn't see the 63 60. <laughs> nicely. I didn't see the 63 64 team live, certainly that I can uh, remember. Obviously, it would be with my dad at various training things, but I can't remember the team playing. But you watch them on the videos and that. It, it, it's the era of football. When you said you were doing this podcast today, I always think it's difficult because of the differences. And, you know, people say the game doesn't change. You've only got to watch videos and that from older games. The game's changed a lot. Certainly the fitness levels have changed a lot. I'm not suggesting the players weren't fit then. The players were as fit as they needed to be then, if that's the right way to put it. They were as fit as all the other players. But now, it's a, it's a totally different thing now. But doing this is a, is a good thing to do because you can look back and say, you know, people say, would this current team have beaten the what my favourite team was, the 78-79 team. And it's one of them things, it's a different formation, there's a different style of play. I was thinking my dad had been looking at the full-backs bombing forward like ours do now, he'd have been pulling his hair out if he could have. Uh, it's just a totally different game. The 63-64 team obviously set the foundations from the promotion side. Obviously, Shanks made a few changes to the promotion team. Bought some big players in, Yates, St. John and people like that, who obviously made the club progress to winning the league that year in the FA Cup for the first time the year after. 
So you, you could say, but that's the first Liverpool team that the people of our era sort of remember. And you can name the players from the cup final side. So, I, I, you know, that's, that's the, the best team we had up to that point. I know we won in the league twice in 21, 22 and 23 type of thing over them two season periods. But I think that like, the first famous Liverpool team who people could mention would be that uh, 63 to 65 side with, you know, obviously Jerry Burning for me dad for the cup final and things like that. But that's that's the first team I can remember the players from. Steve, what do you remember about this team and how, how highly would you rank it uh, in, you know, Liverpool teams that have gone past? I think a bit like Paul, um, I, I was only a little boy growing up in Liverpool uh, at the time. Uh, and, and fair play to you, Paul, on that one. Your dad's appearances were full appearances. There were no substitutes in those days. Yeah. So they, they were actually full games that, we, that, that, that he played. I, it, it's, that side is just before my time. But what, what I can remember is, is the excitement growing up. Uh, I was a primary school. The excitement that that we come up from the second division, and um, you, you know we 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 became league champions. What two or three years after being promoted, and and it was just a very very exciting time. I mean, uh, of the three hour losses, it probably Ed, you were the you were the only match goer. I would guess in those in those particular uh, days, but my, my real recollections, I, I think, did, did we beat Arsenal five 0 to win the league in the last game or a late game in the season? Yeah, I can that. just I can just about remember that. But my, my, my first real memories are the following season when we won the FA Cup, mm. and and I can remember the excitement around that because. To a large extent, that was that was the holy grail for Liverpool Football Club. Um, we'd never we'd never won the FA Cup. The previous appearance was in 1950 against Arsenal when we got B two 0 and it was just a very very exciting time. I think partly because all the other things that were going on in the city at the time, it was it was a booming city, and it was because the docks were were were, were really going in those days. You, you had it was the centre of the universe because of music, mainly the Beatles, but loads of others as well. So it was Liverpool. Liverpool was the centre of the world in the, in those days, and a big part of that was the success of the club. Mm. So Dad, what do you remember about that team? Obviously, the boys have said that you know you you would have been of an age to remember and you'd have been going to those games? Well, I, I remember they were, a, they, were very, they were a very, very good team. Um, played the ball about well, you know, like they do, people do now. But I also I also think back, and I think that Paul's right, that the game is diff, so different now. And maybe I could tell you, I was lucky enough to, to actually know quite well a, a man called Dixie Dean. Now, Dixie Dean was uh, an icon of Everton Football Club, or Liverpool, we in Liverpool. Now, Dixie Dean was uh, used to come into my pub, the Midland, in, uh, in Ranley Street, uh, because he worked for Littlewoods uh, in the stores. Now, he scored 60 goals in the season in the 1930s. And he'd tell me stories of, 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 of what he did. And one of the stories he told me that he played for... Um, England against Scotland, uh, Hampden Park, 120,000 people there. And he had two large scotch and a pint of mild before the game. And I asked him, how, how did he play? He said, well, I scored a hat-trick. We won 3-0. Now, if you said that to people now, I mean, they just didn't... Did, a, the, the, the pitches are much better now. They're be- better prepared. The players is a different. It's a different thing. They've got um, people who watch what they eat. Uh, actually, everything is done to the nth degree now, and that's why I think this team we have now, they play a football that I don't. Even in the great teams of of yesteryear, I don't really remember them. I remember them being great teams, and you and and now Steve's right. At Liverpool at the time at the Beatles and and the music scene that was that was that was the place to be, but this team now I just have a feeling and I hate I know I'm an hour but I 
this team now play football, which I think is absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant. And um, it's it's just it's, to compare the two isn't quite fair. I don't think. Right. Well, I'm not having that because that's not the point of the podcast. So you, okay. none of you can cop out by saying blah de blah de blah de blah. So behave yourselves. What I want to do, Dad. Caesars, you saw this team. Who were the standout players in this team? So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reel the, t- the team off again. Lawrence Lawrence was in goal. Smith Yeats, Burn, sorry, Moran, Lawler, Strong, Thompson, Callaghan, Stevenson, Hunt, and Saint John. Who were the standout players in that team? I'm all gonna, of them. All of all them. them. Okay. Ye- Yeats was obviously a standout player. He was very very tall, great, great as a as as a, as a, as a, as a you know. Um, a, a, a back and Lawrence, um, he was great as well. Lawler, who I actually played against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You when you were a kid, didn't you? When I was a kid, yeah. He played. He said he played for Saint Teresa's, and I play. I I, I played for Breckfield. So we played against each other, and um, they were all they were all they were all good players. But I'm not too sure whether they had the finesse. That's the right word that this present team has. Well, know? I was just going to say because looking at that team, that is that quite a, mer- a workmanlike team. Yeah, there's, there's. I mean, Saint John had a bit of about had a bit of skill, and Hunt just banged them in. But the rest of the team, I mean, I, I can't, I can't remember. Obviously, it was Callaghan a flair player? Callaghan on the wing. He was very, very quick. Um, and I suppose you, 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 you would, you would sort of say he, he was a player who. Who maybe maybe was very similar to the players we've got that very very quick very very good feet right uh, very quick feet but I, I, it's, it's a, it was a different game it's not it's not you see you saying well it isn't it's, you were, you were comparing them it it is a different game everything's different even I mean I can remember going to Filbert Street and basically it was um it was it was like playing on playing on the beach right but it was all sand. And okay. there was four green patches in the corner where the where the corner flags were. Steve, you're desperate to chip in here, I can say. Yeah, yeah, because I did have a favourite player in that side. Peter well, Thompson. Okay. Peter Still Thompson was my, my favourite player because because we I think we signed him from Preston. Uh, yeah, he Preston. came in, he was he was a true winger. And he'd he'd run he'd run down he'd run down the wing. And what he was the closest thing you could think to a Brazilian player. I felt he loved he loved a dribble. He loved beating his man, getting to the byline and crossing the crossing the ball uh, for the Saint or, or Roger Hunt or, or whoever to get on get on the end of. And I, I just idolised the guy. Um, you, you, you know, and the cop idolised him as well. I, I, I can remember, remember those a few sayings. You know, when he was jinking down the wing. Uh, someone, some, someone on the copper show. Go on, Tom. I'll show him your ass. <laughs> you know? And and he, I, I just loved him because of that. He, he was my favourite player in that side. Um, Paul, just just quickly before we leave this team, um, the do you think that the points per game comparison is is unfair because it's a forty two game season? So there's more games, which means more toll on the players. And they got 83 points. And the, the, the points per game average is quite low. It's 1.98. They won the league with 83 points. What do you do you think that's an unfair yeah, comparison with this with this? Well, I, I thought you'd done the comparison where you'd done them all back to three points for a win. I have done. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's 83 points with three points for a win. I, I've, 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 right, done sorry, that. Yeah. I've done that. So they didn't get 83 points, but it's three points for a win. I should have pointed that out at the beginning. Yeah. No, it's okay. Dave. Uh, I, it's one of them things, isn't it? I mean, I was when you said about this, I was looking at that season, I think it was uh, possibly 82, 83. Or Bill, Bob Paisley's last season was 82, 83, wasn't it? The last seven games, we drew five and lost two because we'd and already they, won the league. Well, yeah, and, yeah, and that's a good point. So mm. it's one of them things. But now, I, I don't think the way the players are, I mean, this season we can't afford to drop a point anyway, like the way the season's going. But the season we won the league two years ago, when you got beat by Watford in that game, the first game we lost, it was you know you didn't want to get beat by Watford, but it doesn't really, you don't think of it. Oh, that's affected our points per game. I don't think it's something that ever comes up. All seasons are different. Like when Leicester won the league, you know you can say well their points per game was lower than Chelsea's two years before. 
it doesn't matter. If you've got enough points to win the league at the end, comparing seasons to see, because all seasons are different anyway, as you know, you know what I mean? It's all, you can't say, well, they're going to get, they get two points for a win. We always used to think if you won all the home games and drew the away games, you wouldn't be far away at the end of the season, but that's not really good enough now. That used to be win at home, draw away was okay type of thing. Not all the time, like, you know, draw at every game, but get a point from the away games at least. And we used to set out to do that in games. But the way this current team are now, and you see the current team over the last three years, they don't do that now. We seem to we go out to win every game now, no matter yeah. well, I think, away. I think, that, a difference. I think that point you've brought up about the points per game is is very, very valid. Um, and it wasn't something I considered, the fact that some some of these teams will have put the, pull the full off the accelerator, won't they, after they've won or, you know, and it, it's definitely... And I think it's an important point to make. Not many of these teams will have had an adversary like Man City, like we've got to to come up against, which is basically driving us on and on and on and on. You know, you, we, we we literally can't perfection. we can't afford to draw. Got to be perfection on it. Yeah. Um, let's let's move on to the seventies. Now, I've I've got uh, on my agenda the seventy two seventy three team who won the league in the UEFA Cup. They won the league with 85 points. Points per game is 2.02. The team was Clements, Lindsay, Smith, Lloyd, Lawler, Callaghan, McCormack, Hughes, Highway, Toshak and Keegan. Um, Steve, I'll come to you. And then I'll come to you, Paul, because you mentioned there's a, there's a season that I've missed off here, which was the 78, 79 season, was, was it? Uh, 70, 76, 77. Man. 76, 77. Yeah. Steve, do you remember what do you remember about that that team in particular, the one that won the UEFA, UEFA Cup? Um, th- there's a few memories I've got of that particular one. I- I- in fact, the season for, for two seasons, the season before, we we just missed out because we the, the, there was three sides in it. There was there was Derby, I think, Leeds, and our, ourselves, and uh, we played last game of the season at, at Arsenal. Yeah. And and it was a nil-nil draw. Um, Big John Toshak, I think, actually could put the ball in the net two minutes from time. It was ruled for offside. Um, had that had that have stood, uh, we w- would have won the league that year. Derby right. County actually won the league. Well, I think they were in Mallorca on holiday with Brian Clough at the time. Um, yeah. But then the following season, it came on, and it was it was it was a t- it was a tough go. I remember late on in that season, we beat Leeds United, I think, two 0 at Anfield. Um, to to and, and that pretty well tied up the the, the the league. It was it was a strong side, and I think the foundations were actually then being laid. I mean, let's be honest, the the halcyon days of our club, if you discount the current ones, which I think are halcyon days as well, was probably from the mid seventies up to nineteen ninety. Um, you know, fifteen years we won ten ten titles. I think in that we won four European cups and and at least four league cups because we won four in succession. But it was a it was a strong side. I don't think it was quite as strong as the seventy six seventy seven side, which is the the one that that's probably my favourite side of all time. Um, but we won the league in seventy six seventy seven. We won, we, we won the European Cup and we got beat 2-1 in the uh, FA Cup final against Manchester United and were by, by far the better side. It, right. Although we didn't play well, we were by far the better side. So that would have been, you know, the sort of magical treble that no one else had, had ever, ever had. I, I, that particular side, though, you go back to the points per game. I think we won it with 57 points under the old two points for a, a win. 42 game season, which which comes out at 1.9. Um, I, I mean, you, you'd you'd only just qualify maybe for for the top four, yeah, with that to that type of return nowadays. But at the end of the day, what that side was, the 76 77 side, and subsequent on from that, we were a great trophy winning side. Uh, we knew how to win how to win trophies. You know, we we won. We won the Champions League or the, the European Cup in the in those days, and the league pretty well every season. It, that, that's how strong we were because we knew how to win trophies. And it, if you draw the comparison with the current side, it's phenomenal. But as as colleagues have have already said, at the end of the day, it is all about winning trophies. 
at the at the end of the day, you can enjoy the football, but it is all about winning winning trophies. Yeah. So you know, seventy six, seventy seven, and probably seventy eight uh, was um, they they were great sides. We've got Manchester City to to benchmark ourselves against now. If, if you look at who our competitors were in those days, you've got a raft of them. Uh, I mean, our strongest competitors in in late seventies, going into early eighties, were probably Nottingham Forest and Everton. Yeah, and if you look at the other sides that finished second to us when we were winning the league year after year after year, I had a look at who who finished second. And I've got a list that, if you look at exclude Forest, Villa finished second, QPR finished second, Man City and Man United finished second once each, Ipswich finished second, Watford finished second, and that, Southampton finished second. That, 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 that is really, unbelievable, really, in bananas. comparison to today. That is absolutely bananas. I mean, Dad, do you remember those those teams, the 72, 73 team and the 76, 77 team. Yeah, I, mean, I remember them. And they, they were the team pretty well much like this team who could actually get a result without playing at really at the top level, at the, at the top level. And this team, this team does that. And that's, maybe that's the mark of a, of a title winning side that actually who uh, know how to get a result, and I think this team does. And I think that team did there. My favorite there uh, was Toshak, obviously. I mean, I had a famous dog actually that uh, we <laughs> called we, Toshak, we, yeah, Toshak called Toshak, yeah. uh, was an Afghan <laughs> hound, wasn't it? And um, and he was he was just for me, he was just ph- phenomenal, you know, uh, Toshak. Uh, but all the, all the players. All the players knew how to get a result, how to even when they weren't at the top, at the top of the form, and that's a mark of a great side. I'm gonna, I'm, I've just thought of something here, and I'm gonna keep trying to bring it back to us comparing now and then, right? So I'm gonna say, so I'm looking at the team that was in 72, 73. I haven't got the 76, 77 team up, but if I, I'm gonna name some players, and I'm gonna see if you. Tell me whether that player is better than the player we've got in the team at the moment. It might be frivolous for me to do that, but I'm just trying to drag it back to comparing. So was Clements better than Allison? Steve. It's a real that's a real difficult one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I've figured out how to put you guys on the spot. I've not figured, it's not, not you, Paul. I'm surprised. Um Go on. Me? No, put uh, Steve first. On. I it, 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 look, we, we've we've had Ali for what three years. We 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 had Clem for ten years or more. Um that's why it's probably an unfair comparison because because Clem Steve Clem, is he better? Is Alison better than Clement? <laughs> yes. Right. Paul, is Alison better than Clement? Out of the two of them, at their peak, I'd say Clem. Okay, Dad? I'd say Allison. Okay. So, where did uh, Lindsay play? Left back. Left back. Left back is, is, is Lindsay better than Robertson, Steve? No. I'll tell you what Alec Lindsay could do. In, in, in Very like Robertson, he had a brilliant left foot on him and he could put the ball on a sixpence delivering yeah, the ball. He was, super, he was superb at it. But no, he, he's not. He's not in Robbo's class, Dad. No, uh, uh, Robbo. Okay. So the the back at the back in the team I've got is Smith and Lloyd. Would they come close to um, Matip and Van Dyke, Steve? No, Matip and Van Dyke are better. Okay. Or or, or Canati and Van Dyke are better. Paul. Or, or the two centre backs are better now. Paul. Oh. Well, the, the two now are better footballers, if you like, for want of a better phrase. But if Smith and Lloyd had tried to do what the two do now in games, they'd have been shot at dawn the next day. Because <laughs> they couldn't do what these two do. OK. It's, it's a, the, the position's all low centre half. It's evolved. It's evolved. I mean, it evolved. I think Liverpool evolved it with Hanson and Lawrence and Gillespie, yeah, people like that. Good. But Larry, like, I, I, the thought of Larry, Larry Lloyd marauding forward with the ball and trying to pick a pass out is like bring it out in a cold sweat. <laughs> maybe, maybe he could do it. 
Tommy Smith could do. If you watch old videos of mm. Tommy, he could go and beat a man and pick a pass. But when he was playing centre half, you 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 basically a, a stopper. You, you, as uh, Eddie said before, a back. If you're a centre half, you're a back. Yeah. And you you stayed back generally, you know, you didn't really go over the halfway line if you were yeah. centre half. If you did, is what we what are you doing type of thing? But uh, for for ball play, but out of the two of them, if someone said to you, "Peak Tommy Smith or Larry Lloyd or Van Dijk or Matip are going to tackle you," I'd rather Van Dijk and Matip do because they don't tackle the same now. They, <laughs> right. they don't. They don't tackle point. like Tommy Smith and Larry Lloyd would have. Yeah, that's a good. They close up behind. So I'm saying Van Dijk and Matip can't tackle people. I'm not saying that, but it's a, it's a different. Yeah. For Tommy Smith, if you were the centre forward, the first time you got the ball, it was like, oh Christ. Because you knew he was coming behind you. They don't do it now. It's a different game in the, on that level as well. Dad, and I'm probably um, Larry Lloyd was the best in the air out the four of them as well, probably winning others. Okay, that's interesting. Dad, I'm not I don't think I'm gonna ask you about Lola and Trent because I think you'll probably say Trent, but just looking at that midfield, um um it was a four. It was a four then, wasn't it? It'd be a four-four-two, wouldn't it? So it'd be Callaghan, McCormack. It was Peter Cormack wore five. Because Peter and Cormack was the yeah. first player to wear five. Yeah. Because the so, two centre halves wore four and six then, and then he went with the five. Peter Cormack went into midfield as a five. Okay, so would you looking at our midfield now of Fabinho? Let's say Fabinho, Henderson, and Thiago. How would they stack up as players against these the the players that I've mentioned? So you have got Callaghan, McCormack, Hugh. Emmett Hughes was 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 fabulous, wasn't he? I mean, Shankly yeah, rated yeah, him as the best footballer in the team. And Highway, I mean, what, what, Highway, you would probably in our system now would play in the front three, wouldn't he? On the left, on the left, yeah. So uh, let's discount him. But Callaghan and McCormack and Hughes. I mean, I don't know much about McCormack. What you know? What, Peter Cormack and it's Jack. Cormack. Yeah. Just oh, it? it. It's just Cormac, yeah. Right. Of course it is. Right. The, the the website I got this off of put McCormack, but it's actually I know it's Peter Cormack, isn't it? So what um what would you dad, what do you think about that as a, a midfield? I mean, would would you stack up against, say, a Fabinho? I think I think depending on where you were, if you if you were if you were stumbling out of the um the wine lodge uh on a Saturday <laughs> night and you'd upset somebody who would you want with you? You'd, want, you'd definitely want Tommy Smith because Tommy <laughs> Smith would sort anyone out, I would think. I mean, he's, he was a player who, who didn't care about anybody. He would, he'd, he'd tackle anyone. You'd know, as, as the lads have said, if you were tackled by Smith, he, um, he played the game quite differently. But I think, I think you'd have to say that the, the, the team of today now, um, I, I think, I think in those days you had people who were full backs, you had people who were midfield players, you had people who were centre halves, in that, and and they were characterised in there. Pretty well, most of our players could play in any position. You know, you could move them around. It, it didn't happen so much then, but that doesn't take anything away from the old the older team. It was a different game, and it was a different it was a different way of playing. I mean, I would. I would now looking at our team now. They, you know, they, 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 it's a lot to try and beat them, and I, I just think that they're they're, they're great. Although it's horses for courses, isn't it? I think, yeah. and uh, when and when and then in those days, they were the best at what they did in that day. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm gonna move on to the eighties. I'm not sure we're gonna get all this in in one podcast. To be honest, we might have to do a two part, but we'll see how we get on. The um, the eighties, uh, the the early eighties teams were fantastic, and and you guys might have a different outlook. But looking at the way I've done it, the next team that I've looked at is the 85, 86 team, the team that won the double. But you might tell me that there was a team before that that was in the eighties that was was better. Um, but the eighty five, eighty six team won the double under Dalgleish. They got eighty eight points with a two a point per game average of two point oh nine. The team lineup was. Generally, Grobelar, Beglin, Hanson, Lawrence, and Nickel, Whelan, McDonald, Mulby, although I think Steve McMahon came in that season, and uh, Johnston, Rush, and Dalgleish. So, where would you, I mean, what do you remember about that team, Paul? And where would you place them in the, in the, the, 
the comparison to the team of today. But, you know, you, you're talking that's that from eighty to eighty six. That was just going everywhere with them and watching them every week, home and away, Europe, everything. It was brilliant. The time was brilliant. As you say, you know, you can jump from era to era, and then my my team from that era would be the eighty three, eighty four one that won in Rome. Because to go and do that, that was an unbelievable achievement. That and then obviously. I think the 85-86 team got overlooked a little bit, certainly by other people, because uh, of what happened. Plus, we'd be Heisel caused the problem with that team because it was just, you know, well, it was a different... Because of that, there was different things going on in football. You're not in Europe. You've got no Europe to concentrate on. Other, obviously, other teams were in Europe because of it. Uh, even I like it when you say Kevin MacDonald. Uh, he's a name that people now, probably Liverpool fans of a certain age, will clearly remember him from that team, but I don't think a lot of the younger fans would know who Kevin MacDonald was if he said his name. There's a few of them, even like Ronnie Whelan. Ronnie was one of my favourite players of all time at Liverpool for what he did. Uh, Steve McMahon, when he come in, he come in as the midfield, he took over from like Sooners' role as the tackler in midfield, if you like, you know, as a specific man who'd deal with the player on the other team with the most skill if you like well that 83 that 83 team which had Sunas in it that won in Rome yeah who was playing up front in that game was Rush was Rush playing Rush, then or Rush and Dalglish was Rush and Dalglish was it yeah but, Rush, yeah. Uh, but just uh, quickly just I know jumping away from that that point Steve was saying about before the Arsenal game where we won we, we, like, we should have won 1-0 and the goal got disallowed the referee in that game, you can look him up on Google, anyone listening, Roger Kirkpatrick, his name was. He used to call him Mr Pickwick and he never refereed Liverpool again after that game. Really? He never refereed another Liverpool game after he disallowed that goal for no reason at all. Right. It was, it was a goal that just got disallowed for literally no reason. He right. said it was offside and it was, it was only one of them when the ITV News had a camera there with a grainy footage of it, which I think it is available on YouTube, but there's no one offside in a million years. And he just disallowed it. And as we know, you know, Clough and uh, the people there were capable of making a few offers and types of things, shall we say. So whether Mr. Kirkpatrick had been spoken to before the game is another bad thing. Jump back to something that's annoyed me for four, 50 years. <laughs> Can we get back to what we, yeah, so get back to what we were talking about? about apart from... No, just, just a quick story about Kevin MacDonald. Uh, mm. He unfortunately broke his leg at Southampton in a league game at Southampton. He, he broke it badly. There was a bit of bone coming through the sock and the foot. And my dad went to the St. John's ambulance room with him, as it was at the time at the Dell. And my dad's talking to the Southampton club doctor and they've got the back to Kevin MacDonald as they're talking to the doctor. And next thing my dad says, there's an almighty scream behind him, a, a blood-curdling scream behind him. One of the old St. John's ambulance fellas was trying to take Kevin MacDonald's boot off the leg that was broken and he was pulling his boot, honestly. My dad said the St. John's ambulance man needed the St. John's ambulance man when he'd finished with him. He said the doctor jumped in as well quickly, but he said the St. John's fellas, bone sticking to his foot and the St. John's trying to take his boot off without untying it, holding the back of his car and pulling the boot. <laughs> I know it says about Kevin MacDonald that's the story that comes to I mean, mind back, back then that would have been a, a career threatening injury wouldn't it I mean yeah, it's yeah. not like it, now well, where he'd recover from a broken leg no problem it's back then it, it, it would be interesting now that you've said that to see how many games Kevin MacDonald actually played for us after that yeah. injury interesting like Jim Beglin which was uh, you know we lost him from that team that's as right. well that's uh, right we Doug did Stevens doing that tackle on him which to see him the other day again it's a if you, if you, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's, it's an outrageous tackle. When Everton fans go on about things that we've done over the years, you know, Jimmy Case on Nulty and people like that, that doesn't get mentioned much, that tackle on Jim Beglin. But if you ever did, go and watch it on YouTube. It's an absolutely dreadful tackle. And he knows it as well, Stevens. He knows what he's doing because he overruns the ball. So he knows exactly what he's doing in the tackle. Steve, but, this um, 85 86 team. Um, like Paul said, they're not very celebrated, but could that be because they had such a difficult um, first half of the season? I mean, I think they won the league by winning 11 of 12 games at the end of the season at the time, which was unheard of. I think they were quite low in the season. I always remember seeing a, there's a great documentary about the double winners and 
Alan Anson goes to Kenny midway yeah. through the season. This is the worst Liverpool team I've ever played in. This team's going to win nothing. And Kenny was well, like, well, you know, if we get on a bit of a run and all that sort of thing. And that's that's basically what they did. I wasn't aware of that of, of, of that particular comment. Um, I mean, just comparing the side, we, we, we talked about comparing centre-backs earlier when you, 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 you were saying Larry Lloyd against the current ones. Um, I, I mean, what, what was... If there is a centre-back purring, I think, that, that is to rival what we've got at the moment, it was Hanson Lawrenson. Mm-hmm. You, you know, they were silky. They were they were ball players. They really were ball players. You know, they they weren't the traditional centre half that Paul you talked about earlier for sure. Um, but they they were were real ball players. Yeah, late in that season, we we went on a run. Ended up winning it at Chelsea. Was it that particular yeah. season? Yeah, late, Kenny, well, Kenny, scored, Kenny scored the goal at, yeah. at, at Chelsea, and and we put we put a run to a run together after you know a as you described there a relatively poor start to the season. Um, it was it was a great side. And, and actually, it's... Hey, I don't want to mention Heisel, but, you know, OK, we, we, we probably lost out, as other clubs did, which I acknowledge, in the second half of the 80s because that side potentially could have gone on and won, won more um, European Cups without, with, without doubt. Uh, and I don't want to get into the Everton argument on that particular one. I, th- I think there's a thing about that season was... Uh, Kenny was player manager for the first time and he mm. didn't really play himself an awful lot. Dad, do you remember that? He didn't yeah, he play didn't himself play an awful lot until the back end of the season. And 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 I think, I'm not sure whether it directly correlates, but that run of 11 wins in 12 games correlates with Kenny coming back in the team. Mm. So, I mean, do you what do you remember about that season? I remember... Did we go? Did you go? You must have gone to Wembley for the final, I'm guessing, but you must have been at all those games, I would have thought. Dad. Uh, me? Yeah. I, listen, I'm getting older now. <laughs> My memory's not that great, but I, knowing, knowing, knowing obviously what Kenny is like, I would, he, would, he, would, he, he wouldn't want to be putting himself in there. Um, he'd, he'd, he'd hold back which, uh, because he doesn't promote himself. And then when he came back into the side, and played himself, then we we went on a bit, of, we went on a run, and that you know. I think it was very much Paul Walsh played in that season, wasn't it? Instead of Kenny, I think. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, let's uh, the the other great team of the eighties, which I'm just going back to the point that you made there before. I think it was Steve about playing in Europe. What a shame that that eighty seven eighty eight team never played in Europe, Paul. Um, the yeah. team of I'll, I'll I'll just go through some stats. Well, we got uh, the team we that won the league in eighty seven eighty eight, won it with ninety points, uh, with a points per game average of two point two five. Going back to your point, I think they won, they were unbeaten in twenty nine games at, from the beginning of the season. So going back to your point, we won the we won the league by Easter. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming that maybe the the results tailed off after Easter, but ninety points is is unbelievable, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, um, no, that just, was uh, just going back. We sorry, Paul. We we lost in the FA Cup final to Wimbledon, who are but at, at the time were seen as minnows. But Wimbledon actually finished seventh in the league that season, so they weren't as bad as everyone kind of remembers. It was a shock, but because Liverpool were so good, the the team roughly was Grobelar, Ablett, Hansen, Gillespie, Nickel, and then we've got Barnes, McMahon, Mulby, Houghton, Aldridge, Beardsley. What were you going to say, Paul? Go on, carry on. No, just say that was the way the style of that team, the 87 88 team, up to a point. Again, you know, you, you're asking us to do comparisons on that. They were probably one of the nearest to the current team yeah. for how we played, certainly for excitement. John Barnes, over the years, I watched Liverpool from, I'd say, the first game of 69. You'd, you'd had players who played who were flair players in that time. You'd had uh, Kevin Keegan in the early days of me watching all the time. Then you've got Kenny playing, Ian Rush playing. But for actually someone getting the ball and getting it on the edge of your seat or even off your seat, John Barnes was the first one I can remember who did it regularly. Because when Bar- when Barnes he got the ball, you could go, you could think to yourself, right, something's going to happen here. You know, obviously didn't <laughs> all the time it didn't because that would be 
you know, out of this world type of play. He couldn't do it all the time. But for, for excitement, that team, you can look back at it and say that was a proper... Some of the other teams were, as Eddie said and Steve said, they were not, not workmanlike in that sense of the word. But the ground out results, the, the team in its 87, 88, we battered teams that year because we were, we were a much better side than 99 because they obviously won the league. So we were better than all the other teams. And the final against Wimbledon was something that's, you, you just look back. I've actually watched the whole 90 minutes again. And it's frightening how we, how we should have won that game. Yeah, we hit the we bar didn't. on the Wimbledon, post, didn't we? Well, we scored. <clears throat> Uh, Peter Beasley scored and the referee brought it back for a foul about 40 yards away from the goal, which he didn't blow for until Beasley was through. Brian Hill, his name was, the ref from Kettering. Uh, (laughs) What's his postcode? K62. Bad decision. Now, he was just, he he, he could have played on, you know, and then Aldo misses the pen, doing his little spot to it. Which I didn't think it was a penalty at the time. I still don't now, to be honest. The Wimbledon player got the ball. So you say there was a little bit of justice for Wimbledon there. But that, that team, that excitement-wise, is probably as, as good as the one that we've got now for attacking play. Obviously, the team now don't attack all the time. But when we start attacking, it's it's exciting to watch. And this team with, you know, Beasley. Be- Beasley was a fantastic player. Was, wasn't he? He was unbelievable. He was always one of my dad's favourites. Yeah. My dad loved Peter Beasley. You know, he's, when he, have you ever seen the goal against Arsenal? The one in the 2 0 against Arsenal around that period of time. Beasley makes someone about 25 yards from goal and goes in and then dinks it over the goalie. Yeah. If you watch, if you watch the footage of the goal, two red legs go past the camera. And it's my dad jumping out the dugout. It's me, my dad gets in the way of the low camera. As the camera goes on Beasley, Two legs go across the screen, red clad leg. It's my dad jumping out the dugout. He didn't do that often. But uh, that that team were a good were a good obviously were a good team. But if you compare in teams, I'd say they were the nearest ones to the current team. I think that's a fair comparison, and I'm glad you brought that up. Steve, is that is that how you remember that team as well? Pretty well. Um yeah, they were they, that was a, actually a football inside. Whereas I think at various stages when we when we've been had successful teams, we've been quite functional. Um, I think that that late eighties side was 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 a football inside. It it it, it really is going to harp on about it, but I will. Uh, it's just a pity that we didn't weren't able to compete in Europe. Mm. Um, you know, at the same time, because if you look at the sides that were winning the European Cup in the late eighties, I mean, you had the likes of Red Star Bel- Belgrade, I think. Who, who actually won it? I, I, I think that we could have given them a good talking to, but you know that's water under the under the bridge. Cracking, cracking side, probably the closest to what we've got now. Yeah, um, I, I think that's a, a an absolutely fair comparison. Um, I mean, if you if you look through that team, Ablett was at fullback. I'm not sure whether there was another option there. Maybe Staunton was coming through at that time. I, I'm not entirely sure. Hanson, Gillespie. Nickel was brilliant at, at right or left back, wasn't he? He was fantastic. Yeah. And then you've got it was a four four two again. Then I think so. You've got McMahon, Mulby in the middle, which is as solid and as creative as you're going to get. I mean, they them two would stand up against anyone, I would think. Houghton was functional on that right side, good footballer. But then you had the Barnes and Beardsley were just fabulous, weren't they? I, I remember I, this sticks in my mind. I remember Beardsley flicking a ball. His body was going that way, but he flicked the ball with his right foot that way. And it was unbelievable. It totally sold. And that was the sort of thing that I used to love when I watched Beardsley because I don't think it gets he gets remembered like that. He gets remembered for, for scoring goals or being particularly skillful, but his vision was unbelievable as well. He could, he could see a pass and pick a pass out. Um, and we, used, we used to say, quickly, God, we used to say, watching Beardsley, there was a thing the lads I went with at that time he beat players without touching the ball. He'd be, running with the ball. Yeah. he'd be running with the ball and moving and stepping around. And the defender would fall over and we go, you know, you know that's it. You know, it's like Thiago's turn now, that Thiago. Yeah, 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 he does it all the time. That, we it? picked that out when that happens. It's Beasley would run and he, he'd go past defenders. And when you look back at it, you go, he, ne- he never actually dribbled around anyone. He never touched the ball. 
The ball never changed direction. Beasley did. Yeah. The ball didn't the defender did fall over and fall backwards and go off balance. And yeah. he should be brilliant. A little step over as he did as well. It was like a perfect combination, that team. Of it, was, it, it was. It was. It was put together. Uh, I'd, I'd like to speak to Kenny about this at, at some stage, but it was put together very methodically with pieces of how we were going to play. I think, you know, you had Barnes on the left bringing what he does. You've got Aldridge who come in slightly before that summer, hadn't he? Come in in the January, I think, or round about there, who was just an out and out goal scorer, but really good with his head. So it was almost like he he thought, well, Barnes will get the ball in, we'll get, you know, in with his head. Houghton, Houghton wasn't really a winger, was he? No, he was more no, he of a right been. midfielder than a winger. So that may be, I mean, teams of the past quite like that. Paul, you'll know this. They quite like the team to be, I'm trying to think what the word is, but they, if they've got one who's going forward, the other one stays back and it would yeah. be unbalanced in that way. But that that will give you the protection on that side to be able to... Well, everyone moves up. As he goes transi- forward, everyone moves over a bit. In, in transition, you know, everyone, wouldn't be a problem, yeah. And that's the way they used to play there. The ball's on the left, the right wing, the right midfielder should be not on the right wing type of thing. He should be pushed in so everyone moves over a little bit. Yeah, But they, all, they were all decent players, obviously. I mean, yeah. you're talking about championship winning sides and keep saying, oh, like, that wasn't a bad team. They just won the league. Like, you know, it's... Yeah. They were a brilliant team yeah. at that era. They were the team for that era as well. If you're enjoying this video so far, please show your support for the Ken7 channel by clicking the subscribe button, the like button, and also clicking the bell for future notifications. If you could also share the video on your Twitter and Facebook account, that will show YouTube's algorithm that you like our content. Do you know about Ken7 merchandise? The link is in the description of this video. We have premium fanware for fans covering Liverpool, Celtic and Scotland. And it's fanware for young and old. So we have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, caps, mugs, you name it, we've got it. Just something else to remember, every purchase that is made on our website, we donate to the Marina Dalgalish Appeal. So you're helping a great cause as well. Uh, Steve, I'm going to come to you on this one. So we're moving on to 2000 and 2001. And the reason why I'm going to come to you is that I spent many a very, very drunk night with you that season as a young man. Um, it was it was the pinnacle of Julier's reign. It was everything that he'd done built up to that season and all the pieces that he, he put in place, all the signings that he made, all these foreign names that we'd never heard when they came came in all seemed to just come together in that one season and it just went for us. I'm sure the momentum that we got in the second half of the season, I don't think any of us could have seen that coming. But just running through, I mean, Liverpool won the cup treble. They didn't win the league. They actually finished third in the league with 69 points. Points per game average, 1.81. On average, the team was, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk something about this in a minute, was Vesterveld in goal, Carragher at fullback, Left full back, usually Hippie Honcho Babble at right full back, Murphy McAllister Haman Gerard in midfield, and Owen and Heskey. The one thing I always think about this team, and, and, and in typical Hule fashion, and going back to the teams in the past where you, you guys have all said we were very functional then, we just knew how to win. This team is put together like that. You've got looking at that lineup, you've got four center backs, they're not full backs, mm. Carragher and Babble. Babel played a lot of his games at Bayern Munich, I think, as a centre-back. He also played at right-back, but he could play at centre-back. He definitely played the centre-back for the German national team. So you've got four, four centre-backs. Then you move to midfield, you've got four central midfielders. Murphy's not a right midfielder, he's a central midfielder. McAllister, Haman and Gerrard's not a right winger, although he was brilliant in that season as a right midfielder. But those four central midfielders, so you've got four central defenders, four central midfielders... That's just, in a block, difficult to break down. And I remember that season, watching us, and we go 1-0 up, and I just completely think there's no way they're going to score. So we've won the game. And that was what I remember about that team. And then up front, you had Owen Heskey, Lippmann and, and Fowler, who were all goal-getters. There was pace there. There was trickery. There was It was just a brilliant, brilliant team. I remember that, that season very fondly. Steve, what do you... How would you place that team against the team that we've got now? Would you agree with my comments that it was very much workmanlike? 
it was very workmanlike. But um, I'm, I'm surprised you remember much of it actually, because I, I remember. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Cal. I, I, I remember the train journey back from Cardiff after the FA Cup final. <laughs> Do you remember that night? I don't. No, I, I, I don't. I remember. No, I re you don't. You don't because be, because you, you came to our house. We got back to Shrewsbury. You came to our house. You stayed over at our house. I think I did a barbecue on the Sunday. It was a nice day. I went to work on Monday. You went back out. And then you were back down on the Monday night. And we jumped right. in my car. We jumped in my car, literally. And we drove to Dortmund. Yeah, over over overnight, and yeah, we had some great drunken nights. The, the, the only thing I remember about the train back from Cardiff was getting in with a group of lads who had a crate of lager, and <laughs> but they had no means to open the bottles. And I, at the time, was able to open bottles with my with my teeth. So yeah. I became their mate. They were made up with me. I was getting free ale, and and the rest is history. That's right. But what happened there? Don't forget, we we'd had a pretty lean time during the nineties. Yes. And we, you know, we'd, we'd had the FA Cup win in 92. Uh, we had the League Cup win in 95. We we missed out a, a, a little bit. And th there was a bit of disarray. When we got to uh, 2000, 2001, and yet the side developed as we went through that particular season. But it was, it was look, it's always great fun being a Liverpool fan. But... It was extra special, great fun. It was great. towards the end of that season because there was so there was so much going on. I mean, and and even when we came back from Dortmund with 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 three three shiny silver things in in the bag, we still had to win at Charlton in the last game of the season, I think, to qualify for the Champions League. Yeah, which we we'd not played in we before. Came third, I think didn't we, we 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 did, and uh, there was only three clubs that qualified. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I think we just picked Leeds United for for, the, for that third spot. So it, it was it was the, the start of something. It was a very very functional side. Don't forget we 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 had we had Robbie we 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 had Michael Owen who who was had just come through I guess in the previous few seasons. Um, we we had Jamie Redknapp for he, I think it was in he was injured for most of, of that, that particular season. particular season. Yeah. So we had some good players, but we had very very functional players. Well, as, McAllister as well. was the, the standout, wasn't he? Gary and that Mack. was an unusual sign in that summer because you Gary Mack. But he was perfect. He was it was so clever that by um, by Julio. And that was that was that was the season of his goal at, at Goodison Everton. Park, wasn't it? Yeah. The, the well, you got the Gary game. Mack song, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, his, his, his Derby pen and all that. Yeah, and, uh, so it was home. absolutely fanta fantastic. And that, then I think playing in the Champions League, it it was despite the fact that we'd won the European Cup four times in those subsequent seasons, it was it was all pretty new to us, really. Um, it was a new format. We we actually performed reasonably well for the first uh, season, I think, in 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 the Champions League. Oh, are you talking about the Bayer, following Bayer season Labor now? Person. Was it, are you sorry? talking about the following season now? I'm, I'm going on to the following season, right? Yeah. Um, so it was it was all pretty new, but it was a very very functional side. And if you look at it on a pure points per game. I mean, it, you wouldn't qualify for the Champions League, probably no. now. I don't, I don't think. No, probably not. You know, with 1.8, I think it was, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but it was it was actually great fun to be a Liverpool fan. Yes. During that particular season. It really it really was good fun. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, Paul, do you have any particular memories about that season? Uh, not really, to be honest with you. It was not long after my dad had retired. So, uh, my dad started going to the games on the season ticket uh, in the main stand. So, I didn't go to as many games for a few years after my dad retired because he, he was using the uh, season ticket that I used to go on, which is fair enough. It was his ticket at the end of the day. Uh, that, that, that season, obviously, watching it when you could, they were never going to win the league, that team. There wasn't enough... I don't think flair, if you like, but certainly in the cup games, some of the results in the cup that year, we had some fantastic results. And, you know, the Arsenal final, uh, that last five, six minutes of that with... Yeah. I think it, that Henshaw was in goal in that game as well. Wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he did more saves with his hand than Vestavel did in the game. Well, Paul, looking at that team, I mean, uh, the the individual players, Babel was a great right-back, I, I, I remember. He was... Um, 
you know, tall, athletic. He was. He scored. I'm sure he scored six goals that season. Yeah, he scored in that derby. He scored in the Gary yep. Mack derby. He scored the second goal. In Hippie that and Hensho as a partnership. Were, Hippie was just starting to show what how good he was, and Hensho was a, just a good out and out defender, wasn't he? he was a yeah, it's, it's, it's an underrated centre half pairing. Yeah, yeah. In, in the history of Liverpool, if you like, you know, the, obviously we won the four trophies that year or five, I think it was in the end, wasn't it? Uh, Hippie and Hensho were very good. Defensively, obviously, Sammy was good coming forward as well with his uh, on free kicks and corners. And that mm. I used to like Babble, Babble used to be a he was great, wasn't he? Great player to watch. We, 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 he was stolen from us, wasn't he? With that, with that illness, that Gil M. Yeah, yeah. illness, he, he just sort of what it was called, drifted yeah. out the team and you didn't know why. And then all of a sudden, we heard it was a real shame that, yeah, we that, he, he, he lost energy, didn't he, during games? And yeah. you think, what's well, up with him? He, he's not fit, type of thing. Yeah, because it's generally if you look back quickly, Ray Kennedy. When Ray Kennedy left Liverpool, I think, you know, well, why is Ray Kennedy left? And, you know, there's people have studied him since knowing that he'd subsequently had the disease. And, you know, they've said, I know it's different to Babbles one, but they said there's, there's signs during games, right. in, certainly in the late 70s and the, in, at the early start of the 80s, where you could see Ray Kennedy had something wrong with him now knowing what was up with him, if you know what I mean. He'd say there's where he's moving his left arm and where he's moving his legs and that during games, you can actually see it. Right. During game now with the knowledge of what this is all this all came out when he died uh, not long ago, Razor. But, but this this team, um, Dad, this team doesn't stack up against the team that we we've got now, does it? If you look at the, you know, you've got Vesterveld in goal who wasn't wasn't the best. Um, you know, what how would you think that this team stacks up against the team we've got now? I don't think it. I don't think it does. It's, it's, are we talking about the Gerard had just come into the season? Two, 2000, 2000, 2001, the treble winning season. So Gerard is a young lad playing at right midfield, yeah. mainly this season. And you can but see how good. Hippier, Hippier Carragher was playing at left back at that point. He hadn't really established himself. Murphy was playing. McAllister was at the. the you know, he had a brilliant season, but twilight of his game. Haman was playing. And then you got you had Owen and Heskey up front, and Owen was you know just establishing himself. He'd had the '98 World Cup by that point, hadn't he? And we'd seen him develop. He was a bit more developed than, than when he first came in. So you, you know, where would you stack the, this team up against the, the the team we've got now? Personally, I wouldn't. I don't think. Um, but I, what, I, what I remember about it is 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 the um, obviously. Um, Owen and um, and um, and Ger- Gerard was the one that was coming through, and you knew that he was going to be, you know, some sort of player, and obviously developed into into a player. But I wouldn't have I wouldn't have said that that side was was anywhere near the, the side that we have now. Really, there's there's a there's a thing with Gerard in that final, the FA Cup final against Arsenal, where he thought he would he'd arrived, and when he got in that final. Vieira, Vieira's performance against him made him realise he still had some way to go, which I found yes. which I found interesting because Arsenal dominated us that game. It was it was it was absolutely frightening. It, we mm. we were we were pretty awful, uh, and they just overpowered us. But then Michael Owen does what he does, and hit the history's changed. Yeah. Just moving on because uh, I think we'll get through this in one go. Actually, just moving on. I've got an honourable mention of a couple of seasons in the two thousands. My first one is the 2004-05 season, a team that won in Istanbul, the Champions League. Just to give you some context, we finished fifth on 58 points that season um, with a points per game average of 1.52. The team largely, the one that finished, played in the final was Dudek, Treor, Carragher was playing at centre-back then, Hippia, Riza. Haman, Alonso, Gerard, Smicha, who came on, Barros, Garcia, you had Gibril CC knocking about there. There's there's parts of that team that is very good, isn't there? You know, Carragher and Hippia, quality. Uh, Haman, Alonso, Gerard, obviously quality. But Benitez hadn't really started to mould that team, had he? He'd made a Gar- Garcia and Alonso signings. I think uh, CC had come in the season before um, Rafa, but that team 
was an anomaly, really, them winning the, the Champions League. Paul, would you agree? Well, it's just funny you say it. Uh, when you read out the names of the players there, then there's, there's sort of like better, not, not better names, but like, like Alonso. I mean, what a player he was. Mm. Yeah. You know, you like look at him now, without the same sort of skill, he's a bit like Thiago is now. If you look at that, you put say in his range of passing. Like Alonso could ping the ball. He was one of the best passers I've ever seen playing for the yeah. for Liverpool. If you look at that, along with Malby and probably Thiago now, if you put yeah. them three, there's, there's not many actual passes of the ball on a regular basis. Yeah. I'll be pinging. But that that 2005 team, you, you, you look at that now, you think they're not going to beat that AC Milan team that come no, up on shouldn't. that day. And then you're 3-0 down at our time, you think, well, we were right, they're not going to beat them. And then it was just the determination of the team. You know, they got to row four. They had Gerard and Carragher driving them on. And the other players, I mean, Smyson was always uh, underrated for me as well. I think he was a better player than people remember him being. You know, you get the likes of Jimmy Traore. Uh, unfortunately, he scored that. That own goal he scored, it barely haunts him till his dying day. Because that's what people remember. He ended up with a song about scoring an own goal at Burnley in an FA Cup tie. So there's not many Liverpool players who had a song sung that's about them scoring an own goal that knocked us out of the cup as being their song. But he won the Champions League. He won the Champions League. He's got that medal. Yep. Uh, obviously, the team at the time. Uh, you know, you talk about the half-time thing. Obviously, it's probably seen the video. Uh, I think it's one night in Istanbul. Where at the start of the second half, everyone's talking about Rafa's masterclass and tactical awareness. He's putting 12 players on until <laughs> Finn got injured. That's whether that's true or not. Carragher said it, and it's in that it's utilised in that play. But he had twelve people on the pitch coming out for the second half. Well, he was going to make a change, wasn't he? Haman was it's, coming on. It's something to do with Finnan, wasn't it? Well, Finnan, Finnan, he didn't know Finnan had an injury, so yeah. Traor was coming off for Haman, and then he didn't realise Finnan had, had an injury, so he, he had to change it. Steve, yeah. just moving on to the the two. Uh, this is an honourable mention for me, and this is probably just me. Well, that 2008-2009 team were very close to being top draw, weren't they? They, 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 they finished um, second in the league with 86 points and they had a points per game average of 2.26, which is really high. They got to the quarterfinal of the Champions League. If I run through the team, there are a couple of signings away from being brilliant, I think. They've got Rayner in goal, who was at the height of his powers. Arbeloa, who since proved to at Real Madrid that he was a top fullback. Hippier and Carragher were at the utter peak of their powers at that point. Aurelio, when we could get him fit, was a good player. He had a midfielder, Gerard Alonso and Mascarano. I mean, it doesn't come much much more solid than that. And and flair and work rate and, uh, you know, a grit to win. It, it, it's just a brilliant midfield. And then up front, you had Cout Torres and Babel sometimes. It, sometimes it had been Albert Riera. We, we were only a couple of signings away from that team being brilliant, weren't we? Yeah, and um, I, I still have nightmares about that particular one because I, I think it's just an illustration of the fine margins that, that exist. I think we finished four points behind Man United uh, for the league in, the, in that particular season. And I can pick games out where incidents happened, which we had a better goal difference than them. Uh, so we needed another four points. I remember early in that season, we played Stoke City at home. It was a nil-nil draw. Gerard actually scored a goal which was disallowed, and none of us to this day actually know why that goal was disallowed. N none of us know. Um, I, 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 I certainly have nightmares about a fellow called Fred, Frederico Makeda. Yes. Um, United yeah. player who was, disappeared off the face of the earth after that. He scored. He scored the winning goal in a three-two win against Aston Villa, I think, at Old Trafford late in the season. It was late. It was. It was really important, and he disappeared for forever. That's how close we were to actually winning that league. I think what also was was going on then is the the. It was against a backdrop when the club was in absolute turmoil off off the pitch. You know, the Hicks and Gillette, I'll call it an era, but it was a nightmare. Um, you know, um, and 
and and and subsequently it, it it all fell it all fell apart. Alonso Mascarano left, didn't they? And I think that which was, was a pity. Thing, I mean, you yeah. can debate forever. I think you know the the reasons why Alonso left. Of all all that he didn't tra- travel to a I think a Champions League game in, in in against Inter Milan, which we got through. We had, we actually got got through. Um, I, because he was I, because I, he was I having a, a kid. That's right. That's right. And Rafa I, saw his arse over it because he, was, yeah. he didn't understand. And do you know, why do you know you something would... about that? I, I, I can understand that. Yeah, he was. His wife was pregnant. She didn't actually give birth until two weeks later. But that, that's by the by. But um, I, as you know, I've always had a, a soft spot for Rafa Benitez. I, I think he was done a bad deal uh, at Liverpool uh, because of everything that was was actually go, going on. And I, I think on the, the, the Alonso incident, you have to put that in perspective. Um, Rafa was so dedicated to the cause that we were playing in the World Club Championship, I think, in 2005 in Japan, which we got beat. Um, and his father died and he chose to stay with yeah. the side rather than fly back for the funeral. And, and so that's how single minded about how he was. So when you came, when you come to somebody who says, I don't want to go to a really important Champions League game uh, because my missus might have a baby. Um, I, I can I, I maybe not agree with it, but I can yeah. see his point. And yeah. everything that was going on with the club was yeah. was utter turmoil. But it was a good side. It was, Dad. The, um, the, the just going back to the Alonso. I mean, I remember watching a podcast early on when I started watching podcasts or listening to podcasts. And Tony Barrett was used to be the the journalist for the Times, who's who's now works for the club, and he categorically said, you know, a lot of people blame Benitez for Alonso leaving. Um, because they feel like he forced him out and we were trying to sign Gareth Barry at the time and, and that, that forced Alonso out. Tony Barrett was very much of the opinion that knowing Xabi Alonso at the time, Xabi Alonso was always going to go to Real Madrid at some stage and it wouldn't have mattered what we were doing, that would have happened. So do you, do you, do you think that's a bit unfair on to, to sort of draw that conclusion? And do you think that team always had a shelf life because of that fact that there were bigger and better things. Mascherano ended up going, go, going to Barcelona. We would never have kept that team together for the amount of time, do you think, Dad, that we needed to for that team to be successful? Yeah, I do. And I, I do remember the Benitez uh, uh, <clears throat> thing about his, his father. And he, did, he actually said he didn't go to the funeral. And did he, um, in Spain then, you see, in Spain, when somebody dies, they're, they're actually... Very, very, very quickly. And Benitez actually said that he'd uh, said goodbye to his father. And that was quite, quite a, a, you know, a big thing for him. But they do, it's different, it's a different system in, uh, in Spain. You know, obviously I lived in Spain for some time. And it's a different system. And he'd already, he'd already said his goodbyes. But uh, just keeping, I don't know how a lot of uh, clubs keep players together now. Is it worse now? You know, are there more attractions now for players to leave? I mean, we've got our own problem with uh, Mohamed Salah. I Salah. think the landscape of football's changed now changed, to what yes. it was then because Barcelona and Real Madrid aren't the force that they were when we were now people like PSG and, and what have you. But, uh, I, I mean, I... But still at... money is important. And, uh, the, you know, there's... there's the, you know, I, you know, I have, a, I have, a, I have a, a feeling that if, if somebody wants to leave us and doesn't want to play for us, well... I'd let them go. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Paul, just um, we 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 have got through the podcast, I think now. So I, I've got another honourable mention, Paul, which is the thirteen fourteen season, and the reason why I've got an honourable mention for this team is that they got eighty four points, finished second. They scored a hundred and one goals, which is the highest amount of goals that any Liverpool team has scored, I think, since the sixties. Certainly since the 60s, because I had a look at the stats before. I didn't have them from before the 60s. Um, the problem was that they conceded 50. Uh, and that team, looking at that team, compared to the team we've got now, we weren't far off there either, were we? Do you think, Paul? Have you got the list of players for that? I Obviously, I haven't no, actually got the list of players. Oh, hang on. My, maybe I have. I'll, t- I'll tell you them. So it would have been... Hang on. Give me two sacks. 
It would have been. Would Ray, Rayner have been in goal that season? No, I think uh, I. I think it was Mignolet, wasn't it? Was it was it Mignolet? So there's yeah, that was his first season. So it would, would have been. I haven't got the team for that, but. I th- let's let's try and work it out. So it would have been Mignolet in goal. It was Skirtle and Carragher at the back. Would it have been? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm very poor on recent, more recent team. Maybe Full, the 78, 79 team. Fullbacks, Steve. Fullbacks would have been. I genuinely can't remember who. Was <laughs> <afraid>. <laughs> genuinely, don't it's want to come up with a name. Case them about ten years out. I, I, I think we all re- we all remember that season as being um, Suarez, Sturridge. Sturridge well, well and, this yeah. is the thing: Suarez, Sterling, Sturridge, and Gerrard <laughs> are, the, are the main thing about that that season. Um, and that's really where I was sort of going. How do you compare that front four to the front four that we've got now? Maybe I mean that maybe that's the way to look at it. Yeah, let's have a little look. I've got the team. So we had Glenn Johnson at right back and Jose Enrique yeah. at, full, at, at left back, which, to be honest with you, if, if you look at the history of Liverpool fullbacks, they were a lot of people had, had Glenn Johnson had his detractors. I a lot. Of I thought he. I like. I thought he was good. I like Glenn Johnson. Yeah, and they had Sacco. Daniel Aga was still there, but I don't think he played that much that season. Skirtle certainly played more. Carragher had gone by that point, looking at this. So it was Sacco, Skirtle, which is probably why we conceded 50 goals, I would argue. <laughs> and then you had Coutinho as well. So you had mm. Coutinho, Sturridge, Suarez, Sterling was coming through, and Steven Gerrard. So there's five there who were absolutely outrageous at the time, weren't they? Which is what propelled us to do what we did and we come so close. I mean, we weren't far off. The, the problem with that team and why that team isn't remembered fondly is that the, the next season, Suarez goes and the players that come in are um, Lambert, Balotelli. Do you know what I mean? And that's where it all falls down. Whereas that team should have really, had it have stayed together, would have, yeah. would have gone, done something, I think. Would you agree? It was, certainly, it was certainly good to watch going forward. But, oh, you know, it was that, the most the fun that you'd stats, ever have watching Liverpool that season. It was unbelievable. Stats, pay, you know, obviously confirm that. But defensively, that, that obviously Brendan was managing them, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was lucky. We, we went to a do, uh, the players' presentation do, and it was the day after the 3-3 at Palace. You know, the, the infamous 3-3 game at Palace, if you like. And... He come over, he seen my dad on the table with us. He just come over to say hello. We were talking. And he just said to me, he said, did you watch the match last night? I went, yeah, you know. I said, just couldn't get them. We couldn't get them organised. It looked like on the telly that once we went 3-0 up, we were got, because of this goal difference thing, we were just bombing forward when we didn't have to. So, you know, we was talking to Brendan Rodgers, just very quietly talking to him. and said, you know, were, were you trying to stop them on the bench? What we, You know, you must have been. Because we got called for a breakaway that made it 3-2, I think it was, when we were 3-1 up with six, seven minutes to go in a game. So how you get caught on a breakaway when you're 3-1 up with not long to go? Just because we were bombing forward, going for goals. And he said, just on the line, he said, we, we couldn't stop them. They, they, their heads had gone on the pitch. They just, like, once they scored the first goal, he said you could see what was happening. Live was even worse probably than on the telly. He said we literally couldn't stop them doing what they were doing. And it's not something the fan would think of. They think, well, he's not organised it properly. And he said it was just like having a team that you'd never been in charge of before. They just went in the head completely in that game and they couldn't stop them doing what He was shouting, he said he was shouting players to go down injured, get, go get injured, because he wanted to stop them and get on and right. sort, try and sort it out. He said he just wouldn't, it just went mad. It did the whole thing. He just basically lost control of the team. Right. And the team lost control of what they were doing. It ended up being three three. And I think for memory, Palace could have won it in the end. Yeah. And it, that, that's like the famous game that cost us the league, if you like. Or in, do, in do, do you know though, Paul, the that thing is had we won that game seven nil, we still wouldn't have won the league. I know. Um, I know. because it, it let's be honest, it was the Chelsea game that killed us. Yeah, we yeah. did what you were saying when it was three nil, it didn't have to be four nil. That was the whole yeah. point of that. But I think that Palace game 
knocked the team back a lot. I think it was a, yeah. a, a mental thing from that game as well. But you don't you don't know if we win that Palace game. Let's say we win that Palace game three 0 right? You don't know what that then does to City at the time. Yeah. You don't because, because we're still in the hunt. The Palace mm. game made us irrelevant at, in the yeah. in the in the title race. Whereas if we'd have won that game, doesn't matter by what score. All right, they had the goal difference, but then you you force you keep. It's a phrase that I absolutely love that the Anfield rap say all the time. You keep Man City honest. They have yeah, to. They-, they have to be honest then. Otherwise, you're just handing it to them. And in that season, I felt by that game, the mentality in the team in that team was just like we we go and just attack and we tack, and because we're that good, we can score. And I think they genuinely believed before the game that they could get the goal difference back by winning. You know, we got a little sniff of it early on. And, you know, I seem to remember, I don't know whether this is accurate, but Luis Suarez scored a goal. It might have been the third. And I seem to remember him running into, the, the, ball out the, into the thing, grabbing yes, the ball and running the back to the centre circle, the like we can get goal. this goal difference. And I think if you look at that mentality, that's the that was part of the problem in that game because they couldn't yeah. reconcile yeah, exactly. losing. Started going wrong. Like. That's... Basically, got us round two, where we we are today. So, talking about now, the 2018-19-20 team, who were very similar to what we've got now, and they're the team that have won in the three seasons: won the Champions League, the League, the World Cup, Cup, the Super Cup. Um. In 1819, they didn't win the league, but they had 97 points and they finished second with a points per game average of 2.55, which is finishing second is the best points per game average than any other of the other team seasons that we talked about. And then the season we win the league, obviously mitigating circumstances with COVID and the fact that we were so far ahead, but we still got 99 points. And that's the best points per game average we've ever had, 2.61, which is absolutely astounding um, considering... That, like you said, Paul, we probably took the, our foot off the pedal after we won the league and there was COVID and all that sort of stuff. So that team is not dissimilar to the one we've got now. There's a few notable exceptions. Win Alden, obviously, uh, has left since then. Um, we've brought in players like Canate and Thiago, which changes it, and Diaz now. We've got Curtis Jones playing in this team now. Um, how do you think that team compares with the team that we've got now? Is that team worse than the team that we've got now? Is the team that we've got now better because of the additions that we've made and the, the people that we've lost have, have not really been missed? What um, I'll come to you, Paul, first. Uh, I've not really th- thought about it as such because it's all blends into one for me, This how it's been going the last three or four years. It's been such a ride watching this team. You don't really notice, not looking, don't notice who's left. I don't mean that. But you know, when Ronaldo's going, everyone's saying, oh, it's going to weaken the team. The position we're in now, someone said to me yesterday, funnily enough, they went, this is like 1977 season, 76, 77, when we're going for the treble. And every game's important. You're looking at the games we've got in April. We can't afford to, at the moment, you say we can't afford to lose a game. Really, you can't. You can't really see us being able to draw any of them. The only one you can draw is the semi-final against City and then beat them on pens. <laughs> That's the only one you can draw. You might be able to get beat by Benfica, depending on how we go on our own, but you don't want to you don't want to do that to see what the home leg's like. But the current team now, we're playing Watford on Saturday. I'm looking forward to going. The players we've got, Diaz has come in and added something different to the team. I love watching Thiago anyway. I love watching Fabinho, even his tackling and his movements off the ball and the way he plays. It, 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 you've got to enjoy this now. I mean, again, we were talking our last I'm 60 now. I was 30 last time we won the league. If I don't want to wait till I'm 90 for the next time. So I'm enjoying this now. And if you don't enjoy it, and if you don't look forward to going, I honestly think you, you, there's something lacking in your life up to a point because you've got to go and enjoy what you're watching now from the goalkeeper to the right winger to the left winger. Just go and enjoy it. Watch them on the telly. Watch them live if you can. It's it's fantastic to watch them. 
Yeah. And it was fantastic watching them in 1976, 77. It was fantastic watching them in 85, 86 when you win and stuff. It, it really, I think a lot of it, I'm getting philosophically ill or anything. Oh, or, you totally are. By the it, way, you totally are. You're on your... You're on people, your uh, some people don't enjoy it enough for me. No, I get Even, I even actually at the game, there's some people you just want to moan. Just go and enjoy it. So, so going from that, I'm going to cut to my dad who gets so anxious about Liverpool playing <laughs> that I sometimes think to, I sometimes say to him, Dad, it's there to be enjoyed, you know, you're looking at it in the wrong way. I mean, this current team is fabulous, Dad, isn't it? It is, but still, it's because, I think it's because they're so good that, and there's that much expectation that I'm, I'm actually watching the games and, and we have to be sort of, even when we're 3-0 up, I'm wondering, I wonder could these get back? Or, you know, and it, it really is to just enjoy it uh, because I think this, this, this team we've got, we've got now. And the other thing is, with the team we have now, they seem to all be happy with each other and they all want to play for each other. I've never seen a, I would think I've never seen a sort of a team with so much... Um, camaraderie in yeah. it. This team has got a, a tremendous amount of camaraderie, and they play for each other. It's one of the teams that I've seen. They play, you know, they're all individual. They're all individuals, but they actually play and gel together. And it's one of the best things that I've ever seen. But I still get nervous. Yeah, no, I know you do, mate. Bless you, Steve. This is. I mean, if you look at this present team. And I know, I know I compared it to the team of 18, 19 and 19, 20, which is a bit, you know, it's the same era really, isn't it? With, with the obvious exception of a few people moving in and out. If you look at this team, Steve, <clears throat> and if you look at it position for position, in position for position, you, you are looking at people who are possibly the best we've ever had in, in their position. Would you agree with that? I think you could always get into debates um, about, well, this player 10 years ago or whenever it was is better than the one we've got now. But I, I, I think overall, th- 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 this is... I could agree with you, Paul. We need to enjoy it because you don't know when it's going to end. And, and maybe we'll, we'll go through a, uh, a, a barren patch again. You, you should in, enjoy it. I think what we've got now, Gav, is as good as anything that we've, we've ever had, frankly. Um, I said right at, up front on the, on the podcast, I mean, besides how good they are, well, at the end of the day, it is about winning trophies uh, over an extended period of time. So the criticism that could be levelled, I suppose, at the current side is we've won one uh, title. Uh, whereas, you know, in the 15-year period between 75 and 90, we won 10 titles. So, therefore, ergo, um, it's not as good, is it? Well, I, that's a bit too simplistic, I, 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 do, I do think. This is as good as anything that we've got. Which is or, one of the reasons, actually, why I wanted to do the podcast now and yeah. not at the end of the season, because yeah. of that. Paul... I, re- I really wish I could go to the games and enjoy them as much as, as, as you say. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm struggle. I might have misphrased how I meant it. When I'm at the game, I'm not a nervous wreck by any means, but I'm not yeah. convinced something's going to go wrong. And yeah, me too. The time, the other team, as soon as the other team get on the attack, oh, shit, shit. You know, so we always think they're going to score. You never think we are. Was, I'm talking about talking about it now. And after games, yeah. rather than finding fault with what's gone on, that we've won three one, where we let a daft goal in. I, 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 things, I do think in the month of April, actually, I'm going to have to go to the doctors to get them to double my blood pressure meds because <laughs> I think I need a double dose right through April. If you look at our fixture list for yeah. April, wow! I'm wow. But, but that, what you that's that's say, what it's all about. Bring it on! Bring it Imagine, on! Imagine yeah. you know, 15 years ago at the Hodgson team. We would have had everything by now in 12th or 11th, whatever. Exactly. What would you rather have? You know. And Hodgson actually said we should be satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. We? Well, that's, yeah, we a, that's a whole like other debate, the Hodgson debate. Everton and he said that's the best we played this know. season. You know. Yeah. I, I, I've got to get out of a few habits when, uh, either when I'm at the game or whether I'm watching on TV. I've, I've had this superstition 
for years now. When we get a penalty, I, I don't watch it. Never oh, watch yeah. it. Um, even even when even even during the shootout in the League Cup final, I didn't watch any of our pens. I turned away from the screen. Uh, what uh, I really need is us to be up four 0 up and get a penalty so I can watch it to break it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, if it's tight, I'm, I'm just scared to break it. Let let me let me explain something to you. By you not watching the penalty doesn't, doesn't mean make we're going to score. I know, I know. There's no correlation there, Steve. You're not affecting the outcome at all. I mean, I've got books. I've got books on my bookcase that can't move until we lose. <laughs> oh, behave yourself. Oh, <laughs> I, you only got beat by Inter Milan. I moved loads of stuff around because it was a free hit because we'd lost. So I've moved books, moved stuff on the shelves, done different stuff. I can do it because we lost because I can't do it until we lose. The other one, Paul, is I've got a scarf and and I won't have it washed unless we get beat. Uh, but I do get it washed at the end of the season. Otherwise, it would be right absolutely reasonable. Quite, quite frank. And I missed, I missed the Inter Milan game because I was on the holiday, so I couldn't even have it washed then. Gents, um, I'm going to wrap this up now because we've been on quite a while. But okay. just in conclusion, I'll come to you, Dad, just finally. This team are watching a breathtaking, aren't they? Um, absolutely. Absolutely, never. I mean, I you know said this before. I mean, some of the older teams, obviously, the past teams were great, but this is some of the best football I've ever seen. You know, but there are a lot of reasons why. Uh, you know, the pitches are better. I think the players are prepared more. I think I think uh, everything's done to the nth degree. Yeah, yeah, and and maybe that's what makes it. Steve, what we're um, what we're, we're witnessing, regardless of whether. What what we win this season? We've we we've just all said that, you know it's important to enjoy it, and um, you know that would be your message. I'm guessing as well. Absolutely, and uh, you know at times we're, we're scintillating, but the other good thing is that the, the times when things are a little bit nip and tuck, and we've got to be careful. We man it. We we seem to have this ability now to grind things out. Uh, the Arsenal game away where we weren't good in the first half but brought in in the second half. The West Ham game at home, which was really tight. That was really, really tight. But we ground down to 1-0. And if, we, if we've got that ability, look, we've got, we've got a good chance, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, and Paul, would you, uh, you know, what do you think is possible? I'm going to end on you on a, on a note. But what do you think... Is possible this season. We've got three trophies ahead of us. If you look at it, you're saying like my dad's saying something, your dad's just knocked his phone off. Oh, my dad's just um, gone off. No <laughs> way. What's he, I bet you that's his that, I bet you that's his iPad. He's gone. That'd be his iPad run out of battery. Yeah, it's gone. Because yeah. yeah. he said that you'd well, carry on, or do you want to... Just carry on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's possible is we can win four trophies. We've won one. And we can possibly win the other three. Now, whether you're saying if it's likely or not, that's a different thing. The possibility is there because we're second in the league. We're in the semi-final of the FA Cup and a quarter-final in the Champions League. One result goes against you. You can lose one of them in an, in an instance. You can lose it in a heartbeat. You know, City in the semi-final, make a mess of that. Then you've got three cups to go for. The fact that we've won one is a step, a massive step forward because it takes that little bit of pressure off of the team not winning anything. Now, hopefully we don't end the season with a Carabao Cup in the cabinet. That's hard to say as well. But I'd, I'd, I'd rather we won the league out of the other three. If you're saying to me, which one would you rather win of the three? I'd have I'd be league, European Cup, FA Cup in that order. Yeah, yeah. I think we'd all agree with that. But I don't care. But you if don't care. Right. If we end up winning two, I'm not bothered which of the other three it is, but I'd rather if we had the choice. I think I think if we won FA Cup and Carabao, you'd see you'd be a little bit gutted, wouldn't you? I think. Well, you, but you shouldn't be, should you? No, you shouldn't be, but you would be. But if you won any teams. of the, the other two and what we've won, say if you won League and Carabao, you'd be made up. Yeah. Champions League and Carabao, you'd be made up. If you yeah. just won league uh, FA Cup and Carabao you'd be a little bit gutted and just well, Carabao you'd be really gutted that, wouldn't you out of, out of the three possible combinations of only winning two trophies that's the lowest one yeah yeah, yeah. but you, I don't think I wouldn't be disappointed if we won two things this season it is uh, super exciting gentlemen I am 
I've loved it. It's been brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's been a bit lengthy, but we got through a hell of a lot. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, don't forget to subscribe. Hit this, please hit the subscribe button. It's very important. Hit the like button. That's very important. And also click the bell for notifications so that whenever we go live, it's going to be some exciting changes coming up very, very soon. You will know when we are going uh, live or we've uploaded a new video. Gents, thank you very, very much. Good luck for the rest of the season. Up the Reds. Certainly. <laughs>